Today's video is all about participation. I want you guys to get involved and help me answer this very important question about you. How does someone make you feel? <laughs> All right, trivia time. What is the single most important ingredient when it comes to having an amazing sex life? That is correct, good communication. Next question. What is the most universal and widely used form of communication? Language. By far one of the most popular questions that I get asked is, how come it's very easy for me to make myself orgasm, but when it comes to sharing this with a partner, it's seemingly impossible to accomplish? And I think the answer to that is, Communication. Now when we are self-pleasuring, we just follow the feeling. But when we have to describe where that feeling is going or what we like to somebody else, again, we don't know what terms to use and there is no universal glossary that both people will understand. So today, I wanna to change that by introducing some terms that I think all of us can relate to on some level or the other. Now don't get me wrong, there are millions of ways people achieve orgasm. And so if none of these terms work for you, please do call it out, but hopefully you find one that fits the bill. The word is edging, and edging is essentially when someone likes to be brought to the brink of orgasm and then brought back down, and then brought back to the brink, and then brought back down. Doing this in a series of succession gives them the most powerful and memorable orgasm. The next word is consistency. That means when I say that feels good, I mean that feels good and stay there. For a lot of people who enjoy consistency, whenever somebody changes the motion really rapidly while you're in the flow, it can kind of put you back at ground zero. The next term is orbiting. And now orbiting is used to describe when the actual body part itself is too sensitive to touch. There's too many nerve endings, it's almost painful when there's a lot of direct stimulation on the clitoris, for example. They'd rather somebody go around it and that circling feels really, really good, but the direct stimulation, not so much. The next term is rhythm. And rhythm is exactly as it sounds. It's like do, 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 do. You get the point. Rhythm essentially is a mix of spontaneity as well as repetition. It's giving somebody something different with each stroke, but in a consistent pattern that they know and enjoy, and that really excites them. The next term is surprise. Now these individuals, there really is no rule book and there is no particular thing that gets them there. When they're self-pleasuring, it's something different every single time. And with a partner, they want the same thing as well. Multiples, that's a pretty easy one to understand. Some people are able to achieve multiple orgasms and their first orgasm is almost a little small firework and it tends to get bigger with time. But somebody can let you know off the top, like look, when I have that big moment, don't stop there. Keep going because there's more in store. The next term is accenting. Accenting essentially means there's a very particular area that you like special attention played to. Now for a lot of people who have clitorises, the right side tends to be really sensitive. So if you liked accenting, you'd say, hey, put a special accent on the right side. You might do a bit of orbiting, maybe you do consistency, but you're always gonna come back to that main event, which is the right side. The next term is framing, and this is really an all-encompassing term. So essentially what you're saying is that it has to be a bit of fantasy. Maybe there is a little bit of role-playing going on there, or maybe it is just the two of you guys having conversation. Lots of dialogue, lots of mental stimulation. It's not about the physical. It's really about getting the mind, the biggest sexual organ involved. The next term is layering. Now layering is when you like to have a barrier between your genitals and the stimulation. So some people prefer a pillow, so something that Again, that's rubbing up and down against it without direct genital content feels a little bit better. Layering can also be with clothes on. Um, of course, there are other fun things to layer with. A condom obviously is a really great thing to layer with, but there's tons of different items you can put between you and that individual, which add friction as well as a little bit of protection because direct stimulation might be too much. Up next, let's discuss staging. And staging is when you do things in stages. Start off with the breasts only, start off with kissing only. If you go directly to that person's hotspot, it's not going to go very well and it may take longer for them to get to that promised land, so they prefer. If it goes in a particular order, it's kind of like a meal. It's a seven course meal. And yes, the entree is in the middle, but it's in the middle, it's not off the top. Signaling. Now signaling essentially is creating a roadmap to success for somebody. Signaling can be done through sounds like or it can 
can be done through physical touch. If you and your partner create a language between each other that says, I like this, I don't like that. It can be something as simple as when I make a sound, I like it. When I'm silent, I don't. Or when I'm silent, I like it. And when I'm moaning and shifting, it means that I don't. The next term is hinting. And hinting again speaks to the individual who has areas that are way too sensitive to touch, but maybe once in a while, it's okay. Now this could even be the cervix, for example, when it comes to like a sexual penetrative stroke. The cervix itself tends to be very painful um, when you have a lot of direct stimulation against it because it is the neck of the uterus. It doesn't have a lot of give to it. On the flip side though, a little bit of pain pleasure can be really nice for people. So hinting might be a lot of shallow thrusting and then maybe one deep. The next term is pressure building. Now there are lots of juicy nerve endings all over our body and some of them respond to light touch, some of them like aggressive touch, some of them like to be scratched and others just like to be held very firmly. A great area to do this would be the mons pubis, which is the pubic area of the genital male or female and applying pressure to that while you are giving attention to other main focal areas can feel really good for people. Some people just like pressure by itself. The next term is shifting and now to be honest, I'm not firm on this one. I couldn't really figure out how to put it into words. This is the best that I could do, but essentially shifting is when you work around the major erogenous zone and instead of stroking over top of it, you might just move the skin back and forth, which again makes a tugging effect on the genitals or on the erogenous zone, which can feel really good. But again, direct pressure may not be wanted or desired at that time, but just, you know, at the top, at the bottom and just moving it up and down. Up next, let's discuss stroking the spots, the G spot, the A spot, the U spot, the C spot. There's definitely many, many more spots wherever there again is a cluster of nerve endings, which happens to happen anytime that two joints connect uh, or two limbs connect. There's always like a sensitive spot there. Joking essentially is when you have a cluster of nerve endings anywhere and you enjoy either pressure or a light back and forth touch against it. And that really gets you going. Up next, this is a series of S terms. It's the sucking, it's the squeezing, it's the suctioning. And so in essence, if you isolate the erogenous zone or whatever the area is that feels really good and lightly suck on it or suction it so that it's being pulled away uh, from the rest of the body that can feel really good for some people on the flip side squeezing where you take the outside folds are not as sensitive and fold them over top maybe back and forth over the sensitive area that's awesome for some people too and last but not least, there is cocktailing, which is mixing up a bunch of different ones. Now, the amazing thing about the glossary term is it's not about finding like love languages, your single love language. It's about knowing the different terms that you can use at any given moment. So you don't have to be a consistent girl all the time. Maybe sometimes you're up for the surprise. You don't have to always be suctioning. Sometimes you can be orbiting. So it's knowing what these terms are and saying yes to that one, yes to that one, and no to that one. So I would love to know in the comment section below as you were listening which ones are your yeses and do you have some terms that I didn't in the list that I have to know about and speaking of terms many of these terms I believe like 11 of them are, come from a website called oh my gosh yes and that's all this website is dedicated to doing uh, so once again in the comment section below I'm dying to know which terms really like jumped out at you like really really jumped out at you you ain't trying to flip through cheeks for no ones no one about to rub the buns for good luck I get it girl oh yeah I get it girl uh, yeah 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 I get it girl uh, 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 oh. and if you don't know get it girl